graph of sine and cosine starts with the unit circle. The graph of sine and cosine is simply the unit circle unraveled on the x and y axis. It's as simple as that. We say y equals sine of x. Okay, sine of x. x refers to the angle and the y equals refers to the output. So assign the x value or the y value on the coordinate or on the terminal point. Sine is the y value. So the sine of 0 is 0. The sine of 30 degrees or pi over 6 is 1 half, which is 0.5. And the sine of pi over 4 is which is 0 0.7071. The sine of pi over 3 is, which is 0 0.866. And the sine of pi over 2 is 1. What happens after that? It repeats headed down, not negative yet. And then once it dips below here, then it becomes negative on its way back up, right? But it continues to repeat these values of 1 half, root of 2 over 2, root of 3 over 2, and 1, right? What is the biggest value that it gets to? 1. What's the lowest value it gets to? Negative 1, right? And the sine values, as we have learned, go positive, positive, negative, negative. Are we all good? Okay. Because it takes four quadrants for it to go through its cycle, we call that its period. Once around. Yep. You got it. So the period for sine is 2 pi. It takes four quadrants to repeat itself. So I'm going to mark off 2 pi. I'm then going to divide it into four parts to represent the four quadrants. It's pi. Pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and we start plotting values. This is where you take it in. This is where you understand the depth, okay? The sine of zero radians is zero. Now we move to pi over 6 radians, that first spot on our unit circle. Pi over 6 is going to be a third of the way to pi over 2. What was the sine of pi over 6? 1 half, or 0.5. Then we move to pi over 4, which is halfway between. What was the sine of pi over 4? Which is 0.7071. approximating these values. Then we move to pi over 3, which is two-thirds of the way there. Okay. What is the sine of pi over 3? Root of 3 over 2 is 0.866. And finally, we get to pi over 2. What is the sine of pi over 2? 1. Now, remember, you told me that those values head up to 1, and then what happens? They go back down to 0, right? What was the sine of pi? The sine of the x value or y value? Y, what's the sine of pi? 0. What's the sine of 3 pi over 2? The sine of 3 pi over 2? Negative 1. Sine of 2 pi? Zero. So those are the points that we are now going to plot. The sine of pi, as you said, was zero. The sine of three pi over two was negative one. And the sine of two pi was zero. As I start to draw the shape, what shape do I get? A wave. Yeah. That's that's exactly what it is. What's the biggest value that we get? What's the smallest value? The amplitude refers to how high or how low the curve goes from the middle. 
And so the amplitude of the sine curve is 1, and that's over the interval of 0 to 2 pi. Are we clear about the basics of the sine curve? Sure, but what it, that's really not that important. We're going to go from negative infinity to infinity here in a little bit. Okay. All right. Cosine. How's cosine different? It's the x value. So the cosine of 0 is 1. And then it goes up to pi over 2. The cosine of pi over 2 is and then the cosine of pi is, and then the cosine of 3 pi over 2 is, okay, interesting. So cosine, if you consider it, um, you know, we, we, we have this, uh, these, these four quadrants that goes positive, negative, negative, positive. Uh, so the period is 2 pi. It takes four quadrants for it to repeat itself again. So 2 pi. Where do I start this time? Start at zero. No, I'm sorry, cosine of zero is one. Where did I go after that? The cosine of pi over two was zero. And the cosine of pi was negative one. And the cosine of three pi over two was and the cosine of 2 pi what kind of shape do I get? a wave can I show you something cool? in which quadrants is cosine positive? Or the negative. Or a sine positive. See it? And if I take the cosine graph. It's the same thing, isn't it? It's just shifted horizontally. And that's the relationship between the two. Amplitude is 1. Minimum, negative 1. Max is 1 over the interval that we're looking at from 0 to 2 pi. Those are the parent function graphs. Please flip to the very last page, and I will show you the notes that you get on the test. I put this together for uh, trig students a long time ago, and they seem to make good use of it. Uh, you can see the parent function for sine and cosine is right there. Down below, you can see some of the important characteristics are labeled up for you. We're going to talk about the amplitude and period today. On Monday, you guys are going to talk about horizontal shift and vertical shift. But today, we're just going to talk about the first two. We would like to change these because the fact is, when I talk to Liz, I can talk to her for five minutes. But after that second half of my amplitude, I can't see her. But as I talk in a loud voice, the amplitude gets larger. So these sine waves can change. How do we determine the amplitude? Is A sit on the inside or outside? So does it affect the graph vertically or horizontally? Vertically, the amplitude is the absolute value of A. It's always positive. Absolute value of the number out in front. Same thing for the cosine graph. The period, period is horizontal, correct? Well, does B sit on the inside or outside? Inside, so that affects the graph horizontally. It's 2 pi divided by B. So I know you wanted to multiply by B, but it's, it's opposite of what you think on the inside.
due to our uh, need to do things quickly today because of our pep fest, uh, we are going to skip a couple parts here and just flip right over to this slide right here, okay? Um, we're going to quick identify the, uh, the amplitude and the period for these graphs. We're going to do 4, 5, 7, and 8, okay? What is the amplitude for this first graph? And what is the period? It's 2 pi because there's a 1 in front of the x. What's the amplitude for number 5? And the period is 2 pi. Period is 2 pi divided by the number in front of x. And the number in front of x is 1 and 1. So the amplitude here is but the period is 2 pi divided by what number? 2 thirds. What is 2 pi divided by 2 thirds? Multiply by the reciprocal, and I do get 3 pi. Amplitude is always positive. And the period? Got it? Flip it over. We're going to do a, a con condensed lesson with our crunch time. So we're going to grab uh, this one, this one, and this one. We're going to skip that one for today, and then we're going to skip that one, and we'll do that. So we'll start here. Amplitude. Three. Period. So I mark off two pi. And I divide it up into four parts. Why do I divide it up into four parts? Four quadrants. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side so that I show two full periods. Now I identify where does cosine start? What is the cosine of 0? 1. But in this case, you then multiply it by 3. So you start at 3. So cosine will always start at the maximum or at the minimum, whereas sine always starts in the middle. Okay. So I start at 3. Where will I go after that? What's the cosine of pi over 2? It's 0. Times 3 is 0. I do the cosine of pi. What's the cosine of pi? Negative 1 times 3. And you don't have to calculate it all the time. You can simply follow the pattern. It just constantly goes from the max to the min and crosses over 0 in between. And I could go in reverse order to generate a graph on the other side. Look at the one before it. Amplitude is, and period is, 2 pi.
What's different about this graph? It's upside down. Why? The negative in front is going to create a vertical flip. Now, what's the sign of zero? It is zero. But after that, if you think about it, we did the sine of pi over 2, and we got 1. But now you're multiplying by a negative, so you get negative 1. So you can see that sine starts at that middle spot. But then it'll head up if it's positive. It'll head down if it's negative. That's the behavior of sine due to, in this case, the vertical reflection that takes place. Not too bad, huh? But definitely new, right? Okay, we look at the next one. We're going to do this negative 2 cosine of x over 3. What is the amplitude? What's the period? How did you get 6 pi? 2 pi divided by 1 third. Why 1 third? Yeah, dividing by 3 is the same as multiplying by 1 third. Everybody agreed? So therefore, we do get 6 pi. So amplitude of 2, I mark off. I'm going to mark off 6 pi. Divided in half, and I get... 3 pi. By that in half, I get 3 pi over 2. But what about this tick mark? How do you get that, Chris? Yeah, so you can just take this and multiply by 3, or, or just count. 3 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2, 9 pi over 2. the cosine of zero. One times negative two. So you can see that it starts at the bottom. Where is it going to go from there? Yep, up to zero. Then up to two. Then back down to zero. And down to negative two. Okay, when I say go, I want you to pair and share in a group of two or three and judge each other's sine and cosine curves and say where you can prove and what's really great about your sine and cosine curves. Go. Okay, all right, yep, some of you kind of have graphs that look like shark teeth, okay? Um, you know, try to, try to get the, the curve there. I, I do sometimes take points off on the test. If you simply go like this, that's that's not what we're doing, okay? Well, I, you know, and then some of you, uh, you guys are pretty good, but sometimes people have challenging handwriting, and the graph starts to go like this. Like, that's, it should be evenly distributed, okay? So please try to, try to keep it nice and clean, because I, you know, anyway. All right, last example. Uh, if you notice, they all kind of start to look the same after a while, don't they? What the deal is, is that this graph right here, it's supposed to be one-third of the size of this one, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to show the difference between two graphs by putting them on the same set of axes. Okay? 
we're going to look at 3 cosine of x and negative cosine of 2x over 3. So I start with the first one. What's the amplitude of the first one? What's the period? Very good. What's the amplitude of the second one? And what's the period? So, here's where we need to make a decision on how to construct our graph. Do you think I should make my Y tick marks go up to 1 or up to 3? Because if it only went up to 1, I wouldn't be able to see everything, right? Very good. So, 1, 2, 3. Morgan, stop disrupting class. Okay, how about the period? Do you think I go up to 2 pi or 3 pi? And by the way, and on, on YouTube Nation, this is just one way to do it. So I, you know, your teacher shows a different way, great, awesome. So I divide 3 pi in half, I get 3 pi over 2. Divide that in half and I get 3 pi over 4. So what would the third tick mark be? Nine pi over four. I'm going to start by graphing the curve that has a period of 3 pi. This one. Where do I start? Negative 1. Then I go up and backwards. The next one's a little bit challenging to fit on this graph. Why? Yeah, 2 pi is not readily marked out. So we'll estimate it. Which tick mark up here most closely represents 2 pi? 9 pi over 4 is close. We'll just go short of it. <laughs> and then I'll divide that up into four spaces. Now I'm going to use those four marks to help me sketch this next graph. Where do I start? Up at 3. Oh, thank you. Hey, what'd you do? Get back to me. Okay. try to catch us right before we get to the bell here, but um, some of you might say, well, really, Mr. Gens, how accurate of a graph is that? I mean, it doesn't look like we really spent much time actually trying to generate that graph. Um, you can see my x minimum will be negative 3 pi. My x max will be positive 3 pi. My tick mark is 3 pi over 4, pi divided by 4. I have a y max of negative 3, y min, whoops, a y max of 3, a tick mark every 1. Watch my graph. You tell me if you think that that's an accurate depiction of what I just drew or not. 
Uh, we're pretty much spot on because we're amazing. Worksheet.